Hello, big people, small people, boys and girls all over the world. My name is TB Weez. I'm Kyle ALW. And welcome back to a new podcast that we're doing. Uh, Kyle actually brought up uh, the idea of doing a podcast. So does that mean that you have a new idea? I do. I do have an idea. Awesome. Let's hear it. So the topic I was thinking about for this was, um, see how I want to put this. Basically things like the console wars and like the, just the state of gaming in general and things like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, uh, I definitely understand that. Uh, well, as many people are, uh, very much aware, uh, console wars have been going on for God knows how long, uh, ever since there has been consoles. Yep. Basically. <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, it, uh, and it's, it's gone through many different changes, I would say. And I feel like for the most part, early days it seemed like it wasn't super toxic because i feel like at the end of the day um when it came to early uh console wars um and i'll just say like um like obviously there would probably be like atari and then eventually you know nintendo uh i think they were kind of like going first, like major like the first major console wars, I think, was Nintendo and Sega. Yeah, um, but that didn't uh, really start um, till a little bit around the '90s. But yeah, you're yeah. right. Ar- around that time, it was Nintendo and Sega both going at it, and I mean, let's just call it what it is i mean nintendo kind of won that one because yes sega had uh sonic and i think virtua fighter um as well as a handful of others um but for the most part it was mainly sonic and the it's it's very interesting because like i've played different games on both the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis and I just gotta be honest it seemed like the only games that were really good on the Sega Sega Genesis were like official Sega games like Sonic but if you wanted to play like a uh, per- perfect example right here um there was this, uh, I had Tecmo Super Bowl 3. I've played it on both the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. And Sega Genesis makes it look like you're playing on the, on, on the original Nintendo. Even though <laughs> it's an early 90s game. And... Like, I remember um, playing it on the Super Nintendo and it just being way better. Like, the graphics were a little bit better. The soundboard was better. Just everything about it was way better on the Nintendo. And then, then you get into the 3D era. So you had um, the Sony PlayStation. Uh, Sega released, I believe it was the Sega Saturn at the time. And Nintendo had the Nintendo 64. And I would say they were all... They all had... um, They all had... uh, good things about them i would say though that once again sega 
was nowhere near Sony and uh, Nintendo, though. And I think that one was a really tough one um, because, um, I mean, Sony had its had plenty of uh, mascots, whereas, um, I mean, both Sony and Nintendo had plenty of mascots to pit against put put against each other um so i really guess at that point it's really just which one do you prefer or um you know whichever because i would say they all kind of uh performed fairly well and then i think sega was trying to be uh you know they were trying to beat everybody to the punch so they came out with the dreamcast and it was all right, but the problem is, um, a year later, uh, you had the PS2 come out, which already had better graphics than the Dreamcast, um, and the Xbox came out as well, and then, oh, uh, then the, the, GameCube. Then the GameCube, yeah. And I would say at that point, it kind of seemed like they were all, I would say PS2 was definitely probably leading that era. I don't know. I would have to look up numbers and stuff. Um, but, I'm pretty sure PS2 like dominated that era. Yeah. Um, but anyways, we can go over like history and stuff so many times um let's just fast forward to how things are going now because now basically ever since microsoft entered the ring it's slowly turned into this really toxic pointless war <laughs> against it just gamer versus gamer about like which console is better and it's gotten quite silly at this point especially because you know i ju i just feel like every console is going to do its thing and sometimes i feel like what it comes down to sometimes is like exclusives and stuff um which let's be honest like Sony and Nintendo have way more and just way better exclusives than Microsoft does. I mean, and, and the thing is, um, for many years, it seemed like it was uh, Halo that was probably the best one. I know there's probably others that some some people would say, like, ooh, those were also really great exclusives and stuff but i think for the most part halo was the one that really kind of held the torch for uh xbox uh but uh the thing is now you can get most halo games on pc so at this point why even bother getting an xbox you know um now there have been a few PlayStation games that have been introduced to PC, but uh, you still you, you, there's still certain games on PlayStation that you need to play on the PlayStation. Um, so I definitely feel like, in in my opinion, as far as like consoles. I enjoy uh, PlayStation way more than all of them. Now, I will say, yeah. as far as, like, um, like uh, convenience, the Nintendo Switch is a very convenient console because 
you can use it as a console and play it on your TV, but you can also play it on the go. So it's a very, very convenient console. The only downside I would say to it is the fact that um, you cannot play everything on the Switch. Because I remember getting like uh, one of the WWE games on there. And it just, it lagged so badly on the Switch. Um, so I think it's safe to say that, you know... It really depends on what game you're getting on the Switch. Um, and it definitely seems like um, at that point, it's kind. it kind of makes you wonder why those games were even um, given the go-ahead uh, when putting it on the switch you know like it's like it's it makes you wonder if they even tested them beforehand um or if they just made the switch port and then just went ahead and uploaded it onto the nintendo store and everything um but regardless like uh whether or not you agree with us or agree with certain people, I think we should all be able to agree in the fact that the arguing about which console is better is such a silly argument. It's like at the end of the day, you know, get whatever console you want and let other people have their own opinions about it. But stop sitting there just arguing with each other. Like, the thing is, like, we're all gamers. We're all supposed to be a community. And it seems like a lot of times we're not. And it's very sad to see because, like, when you hear the words community, it's like that's what you're supposed to be. And you're, you're just instead just bickering amongst yourselves. It's um kind of sad honestly um but uh yeah what what would your opinions be on the console war um well for starters i don't i think that the main competitors at this point in time i'd say are playstation xbox and pc I don't even think Nintendo's even a competitor at this point. They're just off doing their own thing. Um, yeah. And I, I, I gotta say, like, I definitely respect that of Nintendo. Like, they just don't really care at this point. They just want to make games. And, and I will say, like, there are certain things about Nintendo that are not great. Uh, I will say there are certain things that they do to try and limit some players. And unfortunately, that is uh, also very sad. But I'll give the respect to them for not caring about, you know, competing in these console wars, basically. And just at the end of the day, just making games. I mean, honestly, like the Switch has been around um, through what? The, it's it's been like basically almost two generations of gaming consoles that the Switch has still just been through. They're not making a completely new console and i know there's like the the like um the pro nintendo switch or whatever um but i'm talking like a legitimate like new console nintendo hasn't even bothered actually making one and i feel like that's just because 
they probably just don't feel the need to. And at this point, like, the interesting thing about Nintendo is how many changes they have made to every single one of their consoles throughout the years. Um, and now they've made this console that you are that has multiple capabilities you're able to play it on your tv you're able to play it on the go you're able to disconnect the controllers turn them into two separate controllers combine them and make one pro controller you can buy more controllers for it uh so you can basically play in whichever way feels most comfortable to you which is lovely because like not all consoles really give you that option. Um, but yeah, I will agree with you. Like it does seem like right now it's PlayStation versus Xbox. And I've never really been an Xbox person myself just because, you know, once again, like it just doesn't seem like Xbox has that much to offer offer you know um again like uh, yeah i mean uh, again like many years ago i would have maybe gotten an xbox um you know just to play like halo or something but again now you can basically get the whole series off of steam and play it on the pc which i would much rather do (laughs) Yeah. And it's like people have always said this this whole thing like oh look at the difference in graphics and they'll show like two pictures and they're the exact same picture. <laughs> I literally don't even see a difference. Or they'll be like but look at the shadows yeah. and it's like really we're making a big deal over this shadow being one shade darker than that shadow? Is that really the the big deal we're making about this. And it's like, I don't even under, like, I understand like when you want, when you've got a new game that comes out, you kind of want it to look nice. And I get that. But what's the point of a game looking nice if it doesn't play well? Like that, I feel like that's the, uh, the mistake that a lot of, uh, companies and game developers make is they try to make it look so good before even focusing on the gameplay itself i mean just look at like and i haven't even bothered getting this game um just because uh basically as soon as it came out it already had terrible reviews and everything and I think it's been rated the worst game of the year. Um, but Gollum. At first I was very excited about Gollum. And the graphics are pretty nice. And it has an interesting art style. But so many people have complained about the gameplay. So it's, uh, again, you focused on trying to make the game look good rather than focus on the gameplay and what do you get you you get sucky gameplay or you have uh examples like cyberpunk which looks really great but released buggy as hell yeah and that that's that's another thing like i feel like a lot of them also just they rush the process too much. Um, and I know it all, it always sucks sometimes when like game companies, you know, they, they push the release date back, but sometimes that's pretty relieving because, um, you know, that when they're doing that, they're making sure that the game is, working properly before they release it out to the public because i like i would rather games continue to just push the release date back rather than just 
go ahead and release it and it just turns out being really terrible i'd rather them just work extra hard to make sure there are no bugs or anything that could possibly ruin the experience for anybody but um yeah i would say it's it it's rather frustrating and um but um what other personal experiences do you have with this? Um, well, PlayStation versus Xbox versus PC, and obviously PlayStation is better than Xbox, but you have all the people that say, you know, PC master race and all that. And in my opinion, I don't think PC is really that much of, really isn't that much of a master race because when you look at it, just based on price, to run the games, you're probably going to have to get at least a $1,000 PC or so. You're going to have to have a really good PC to run about any of the games you want to run. Whereas consoles are like half that price, and they run the games just fine. Definitely. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on the, all that. Like, Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, and, and even when it comes to um accessories too um cuz yeah Xbox had the connect that's it and it did terribly um and I do agree with you on PC too cuz um I mean don't get me wrong like playing on PC is great and all but it's like again you have to make sure that you have all these different things uh to make sure that it'll even run properly um which is a real pain so it's it's like you're you're spending all this money not only on the PC itself but it's like you know not everybody is used to playing with mouse and keyboard so somebody may want to buy a controller so that's yet another thing you want to buy you want to make sure that you have uh you know like a good uh game capture card or uh, graphics card um, to make sure that your games will be able to run properly, you know. Um, and, yeah, you, you go through all this different stuff and, you know, it's it often makes you wonder, like, is all that really worth it? And it's like, don't get me wrong, I love my PC, but it's like, man, I really wish getting a good gaming PC and all the stuff for it was cheaper. I really wish that were the case. But it's just not. So it often makes you wonder, like, okay, like, yeah, it's PC is great. But it's like, once again, it kind of comes down to, like... You know, uh, convenience and everything. It's like the process of getting a PC and paying for it can be a pretty stressful experience sometimes. Especially, like, if you're somebody who doesn't just have a few thousand dollars just laying around. Um, well, if we're getting into more, like, personal, you know, you also have things like, you know, some of these, like, communities in gaming. Like, when you have games like, like the Battle Royales, or like Call of Duty, you know, and Overwatch and stuff like that. Like, those communities nowadays, nowadays are so toxic and competitive that it's not fun to play those games online. Yeah. And I, and I have played them online, and it can get annoying when you have people just getting... ...sense. Yeah, I... I don't understand 
how the like at the end of the day you know we're all trying to do the same thing we're all just trying to play a game and enjoy ourselves but it's like my god i i feel like some of these people i often wonder if gaming is even a healthy practice for them because like you know for some people you know like like myself for example you know i look at gaming as one way to kind of you know get kind of an escape from everything else you know it's 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 a nice uh stress reliever and everything for me um and i just I feel like, well, and, and, and sometimes it can depend on the game too. If you're wanting to, like, I am not going to purposefully play a game that I know is going to stress me out, especially if I'm already stressed. If I'm already stressed and I need, uh, and I need to play a game to take the edge off, most likely I I'm going to play something that I know that isn't going to stress me out. Even I, I might even go back and play a game that I've already played before because uh, there are some games that I go back and play that I would consider to be comfort games. Um, uh, so I, I just, I don't understand these people. I don't know if they should be playing games or maybe it's just the certain games that they choose to play. And it's so toxic half the time. It's like, uh, you know, it's it's like the meme where they talk about, like, the, the Call of Duty chat room and everything. And it's like, yeah, that's not just a meme, though. Like, people are, like, seriously really toxic and messed up. Um in those chat rooms and they say some really off the wall stuff um so it's like and, and that's like one of the reasons that i am so like um skeptical about playing online with people especially if it's a game that has a lot of uh, chat on it like i am sometimes like try I, I i try to avoid that because you know i just feel like there's a lot of toxic players out there and i would rather just avoid the toxicity yeah same well sometimes like if i do want to get on and play a game like i will like I'll like turn off like voice chat and everything so I don't have to hear people and I can just play. That's fair. Yeah. But um it I I just sometimes I just wish I um that we, that we had more people to play online with cuz um playing with these random people, you know, they can be very rude individuals yeah and i just don't want to deal with those type of people um Same. but you know I, I i i enjoy being part like of you know the gaming community i guess you could say um but sometimes it's hard to view it as a community sometimes when so many times it just seems like it's a big old war zone and that's like I, I see so many like videos of people it's like it'll be a, like a highly competitive game like Call of Duty or something you know they'll get they'll get killed or whatever and they just start cussing and maybe drop some racial slurs and stuff. And it's like, man, why can't you just, why can't you just be like, hey, good game, man, <laughs> you know? Because, like, you know, sometimes, like, 
it's your flaw as the player sometimes that ends up getting you killed in a game and you just gotta accept that accept the fact that you lost the other player clearly had the upper hand and they beat you move on there are plenty of other games that you can go through plenty of other matches that you can play through you didn't really lose anything in reality because at the end of the day all it is is just a game yeah right it's just people are so stupid nowadays it's it's annoying definitely definitely <sighs> but um let's see all right how about how about this do you do you think that uh games being made now nowadays in the modern day are better or worse than games that came out like 10 years ago or even games that came out 20 years ago well, uh, to be to be one hundred percent honest here, um, I think it depends on the game sometimes. Because to be perfectly honest, I feel like there are a few games that show up here and there that are legitimately good games, even the ones that are made now. But it's like. Overall, it's like sometimes I'll play a game and it'll be like something that I might enjoy, but maybe not something that I actually want to come back and play again. Whereas there are plenty of older games that I will continue to play over and over again. Because no matter what the graphics look like, you know, <laughs> I'll still go back and play it because it's just a joy to play. And sometimes I just don't get that with every game. Especially with a lot of modern games. I just don't always get that with a lot of modern games. I think the only game... The only recent game, the most recent, I would say, um, that I've actually gone back and played more than once would be Red Dead Redemption 2. Same. So far, nothing else. And that game was made back in 2018, right? Yeah. So still, quite a few years ago. Not 10, but, you know, still quite yeah. a few years ago. Yeah, I'd say Red Dead Redemption 2 and Spider-Man are the two probably best games I've played. I've played, I continue to go back and play to this day. That's true. I'll play Spider-Man. And I think that came, came out the same year, didn't it? Yeah, 2018. Um, so yeah, Red Dead Redemption 2. And Spider-Man. I haven't played any other game repetitively since, you know? Um, anything else that I've played repetitively has been older than those. <laughs> um, so, yeah, one, once again, there's games... That I'll play, oh, um, that I'll play again. You, oh, you know what though? Um, I have been playing. Well, I haven't played this over again yet because I haven't beat it yet. But Tears of the Kingdom is awesome, and I loved Breath of the Wild, and I played that over again. But I think that came out in twenty seventeen. I think. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom just came out this year. And I love that. And I would probably play that again uh, once I 
beat it for the first time. So, yeah, I again, I'm not I'm not saying that all um, modern games are bad. Some of them are made very well. I just think it depends on like what kind of recipe you're using, you know, because I'm not going to play. The, I'm not going to play the campaign of a Call of Duty game over and over again. I'm just not because, you know, I can enjoy some Call of Duty games, but not necessarily enough to where I might play it over and over again. The last Call of Duty game that I actually played more than once was the original Black Ops game. But I think mostly because, like, that was an F FPS game that had a lot of different elements to it. And recently I've been playing Cold War, and that's really good, though, because I, I do enjoy the fact that they've added, like, a bunch of, like, stealth missions and stuff. Uh... So I could actually see myself maybe playing Cold War over again, just depending on how the campaign flows. Um, but that's a big if. I don't know, because, I mean, so far I'm enjoying it. But will I continue to, to enjoy it to the point to where I'm going to play it over and over again? I don't see that happening. Yeah. I think the only Call of Duty I really played over again was World War II. I played because it is a really good campaign. Plus, I like the World War II setting. I just think it's cool. It's fun. That's fair. I think another thing is um, what's so hard about uh, playing those types of games over and over again is the fact that, like, I don't hate FPS games, but I don't love them either. So it's like where I might enjoy an FPS game a little bit, it's uh, I'm very picky about them. I think uh, another thing, like uh, an FPS game that I uh, played over and over again was uh the resistance series um but i think that's just that might just be because like um it's not really a very standard type of fbs game you know um but uh yeah, at the end of the day, FPS games, I'm very picky about. But yeah, yeah um, I don't really know what else to talk about uh, um, under this topic. I will say, I think, in my opinion, one of the uh, one of the most annoying things about modern games... Because it's it's kind of annoying, you know, to download a game and have it take up half of your hard drive because it's so big. Yeah, absolutely, and especially because like, I think what's so crazy is like, supposedly like, for example, the the PS Five, for example, you know, you're paying all this money for a new console. Um. That's supposedly supposed to have, like, you know, better performance, um, more memory and stuff. But it's like the games are going to take up most of that memory anyways. So, it's, and it's like you can get, like, um, an external hard drive or something, um, but it's like, why do I have to go and spend this extra amount of money? 
Um, so yeah, I would say that's rather annoying sometimes. Um, I would say another thing I don't like about modern games is, and, and, and it can depend on what it is sometimes, but, um, DLC, it really annoys me when they, when people have us pay like 60 bucks most of the time and the game isn't even finished basically <laughs> you pay 60 bucks and then they're like oh you wanted more pay us some more money to get the rest of the game and it's like why do I even have to do that it's like I've already spent so much money on your stupid game why are you making me pay more money It's just mm -hmm. kind of frustrating sometimes. Yeah. Even there's the, some good Go ahead. Uh even like even like the DLC that I do thoroughly enjoy like even like when it came to like the uh you know the Spider-Man DLC. And I know that wasn't like super important to the story or anything. It was basically like a like a bonus story thing. But it's just like one once again like you're having me pay money just so I can see more of the story. Why? <laughs> you got suits as well. wasn't it just a story. <laughs> that is true. You do get suits. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say, like, I'll give Spider-Man credit. Like, at least they gave you plenty of stuff. And I think it was only, like, 20 bucks for, like, the whole pack, I think. Um, yeah, something like that. Which is not bad, but it's crazy because, like, there will be other games, and they'll have you spend, like, 30 bucks. Damn near, like, half of what you paid for the original game. Just for, like, two maps and maybe a gun or some sort of weapon or something. And it's like, that is such a ripoff. <laughs> it's like you gave, oh, you gave me two special maps and one weapon that I'm never going to use. <laughs> Every Call of Duty DLC ever. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Except the thing. Zombie Chronicles. Zombie Chronicles was a good one. That gave yeah. me like five or six maps. I, yeah, I, I'll give you, I'll give you a. I'll give you that one. Zombie Chronicles was a nice DLC. But yeah, I just kind of hate the idea of DLCs. I I know that developers need to make their money and everything. But I just don't understand why. I, I feel like a lot of people would be more... Um, more engaged in trying to buy your game if they were not uh, forced to pay extra money for a bunch of bonus stuff. Um, I feel like uh, I just I, I want to go back to like times where it was you know before DLC where it was like all the bonus stuff you just play the game more and you'll be able to unlock it. It's like, okay, it gives me some drive to play the game some more so that I can unlock the extra things. I don't have to pay any money. I play your game a lot longer. I feel like that's a win-win. <laughs> and from, yeah. from that, you know, you make a sequel or a game that is similar to that and made by the same company and everything, I'm most likely going to buy your next game then. Just because I had so much enjoyment out of playing your other game. Yeah. There's definitely some good DLC out there. 
but then it gets to a point where it's not DLC. You're just now just microtransaction. You're making your game pay to win. Like, for example, like I'm not even like a big fan of like battle passes, and that's like every game has like a fucking battle pass now, and they don't give you shit other than you're you're getting skins basically is all all you, all you get now for anything yeah. you're, you're just getting a different character skin yeah congratulations and it's that 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 one is really annoying to me because it's like that it's it's not even something that really adds a new experience to the game you know like because like at least with the with other types of dlc like again they'll they'll give you like more story or they'll give you a huge map pack or something or something like that. But then there's a lot of games nowadays that want to be like, Oh, pay for this and you'll be able to get some new customization options. It's like, why would I pay money just so I can customize my character or customize my weapon? It's like at the end of the day, it doesn't, really add anything to the gameplay experience all you've done is given me the option to customize my character more there's games where i can get that option for free <laughs> why would i pay for that <laughs> i could get that on base gameplay <laughs> mm -hmm. Because companies are greedy now and they want all your money. Oh, yeah. It's this whole, like, huge, uh, just corporate, corporate, you know, greedy capitalist uh, game companies. <sighs> it is rather annoying. Um, but and it's like the the thing is like when it comes to newer games sometimes it just seems like some of them don't really come up with fresh ideas for games a lot of the times the fresh ideas come from like modern indie games they'll come up with some really cool stuff. And yet they're just indie games. Sometimes they're free. Sometimes they might be like five bucks. But at the end of the day, you're playing a game with, with, with somebody who put a lot of hard work into something and may not even care if they get a profit off of it. They just have a love for creating games they put in these really cool mechanics into their games and they're legitimately awesome ideas that should be in a lot of AAA games, but they're not. Right. But anyways, um, I think, uh, I think I've talked about all I really can about uh, this topic. So I think I might end this episode here. All right. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, this has been TB Wees. And Kyle LW. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye. See you.